Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Troy from Murchison Minerals. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing very well, Tracy. Good to be with you. And speaking of good to be with all of us, can you tell me where you're filming from? Yeah, no, today I have the pleasure uh, of sitting in uh, one of our core shacks at our camp, at our HPM project in Quebec. Uh, you know, the, our HPM project is a uh, battery metals project. So it's a nickel, copper, cobalt project um, that, we've, uh, that we've got going. We've mobilized our drills and we've got drills turning. So I'm here on site. Yeah, and speaking of that, I recommend that absolutely anybody following critical minerals, because we have what? We've got copper, we've got nickel, and we have cobalt, correct? Yeah, that, that's right. It, it's, uh, it's all three. Um, so it's a magmatic sulfide system. And, and what we're after, you know, what, the, what we're doing this summer is you know a multi-pronged exploration approach where, where we started the program off uh, with some regional work and that was geophysical work we've, we've updated our geophysics across the entire property with a BTEM survey uh, we've had prospecting crews in the field for about a month uh, that have been banging on rocks confirming EM anomalies and uh, working up a pipeline of future drill projects um, and, and then the point that we'll talk about today is the drill program that we have going on at Bar de Fur. So bar is a is a zone of mineralization that we outlined um, during Q1 and Q2 of this year. Uh, it has a strike length of about 315 meters, depth extent of about 295 meters, um, and a width of about, about 150 meters uh, with individual lenses of mineralization up to about 25 meters. And the, the intention of the drilling right now is to uh, is to expand um, and and push forward at Bar de Fur um, and, and test the extents of, of this mineralizing system. So let's talk about these drilling results. This is stage three. Further to what you just commented about, uh, give us more of an update if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so, so uh, we've got the drills moved in and, um, you know, as you can see, I'm in a core shack. Uh, got some core on the table behind me. Uh, that's from the first hole at Bar de Fur. Uh, we're in the, you know, currently processing that core um, and look forward to having results out um, in, in the near term uh, to be able to communicate you know what we're up to we're, we're excited um we're, we're excited to have the drills turn and we're excited to expand the zone of mineralization and we're excited to get that um you know news out to uh, out, out to our investor base all right so i was just reading a story from dean bristow and anybody that has heard your story or taken the time to understand it better or reviewed your management team have come back to me and said this is an outstanding story there's something going on. Can you talk to that, please? What do they think? Like, <laughs> they love where you're at, okay? They love the management. They love the way you budget. They love your leadership and your track record. Can you tell me what else they're picking up on because they get very excited? Yeah, I, I think, you know, if, if you, we, we break it down into people, process, and, and projects, right? And, and you mentioned some people and, and some process. And I think the, the third component there is a project and that's the HPM project. So uh, it, it's an area um, that has all of the, the fundamental requirements from a technical perspective, from a geology perspective to have district or camp scale potential, you know, and, and, and we're at the very early stages. Um, and so we've got, um, we've got a district scale project we feel, um, and we also have very tangible real results uh, that we're expanding on um, and we'll be able to expand on in the very near term. Looking forward to one of the objectives of this drill program um, is getting into a position to have a maiden resource at Bar Defer uh, by Q4 of this year or Q1 of next year. Okay, and so the drill results obviously are as soon as possible. <laughs> Correct, yeah. so that Correct. you can achieve those goals. Now, of course, we were just talking before we started this interview about all the latest news, the Inflation Reduction Act in the United States. We were talking about the uh, battery material supply chain investment here in Ontario and how companies or and, and or investors are all looking your way. How will Murchison Minerals potentially benefit from all of this? Hey, exactly. From a macro perspective, I think the fundamentals are very strong in the battery metal space, you know, and continuing to strengthen. Um, one of the things that we pay attention to is not only, uh, you know, policy level uh, decisions that are made that have the impact ability to positively impact our space. 
but you look, you know, locally within Canada and, and some of the provinces here, Ontario, Quebec, looking at uh, processes to uh, vertically integrate uh, the battery supply chain that starts at the exploration stage and production of the raw materials and, and feeds through into uh, that supply chain and vertically integrated supply chain and production profile. Now, that's that that's where we come in. Uh, we have a, you know, a project that is a uh, nickel uh, copper cobalt project it's a it's a sulfide system uh, you know nickel sulfides um, are what's re what's required for class one nickel class one nickel uh, feeds into cathodes and, and you know it, it is you know it, in our view and I, I think a lot of people share this view um, that class one nickel market is in a structural deficit um, and from the supply side and uh, we feel that you know from all from for all of those reasons uh, that our HPM project is very well positioned uh, to help become part of part of that process and, and part of the push forward to uh, transition and help transition into um, you know that uh, new energy economy so to speak and of course we could not agree with you more we cover class one nickel shortage issues constantly and i'm going to ask you a question i don't normally ask about shareholders you seem to have some very prominent shareholders as well would you like to comment on that yeah we we feel we have a we have an outstanding shareholder base and, and you know i'll highlight a couple um you know starting with mr don johnson mr mr johnson sits on our board he's a director um he holds about 30 percent of the company and has for a long time. Um, and we're in a fortunate position to have him uh, continue to participate on a pro rata basis on, on all of our financings. Uh, and, and then, you know, you go down the list to um, a gentleman that we welcomed into uh, as an investor, a strategic investor um, in Q4 of last year, and who then again participated in our financing um, this year, which is Mr. Gentile, Michael Gentile. Um, he holds uh, just under 10% of the company um, and, and is very supportive uh, of what we do at Murchison uh, and very supportive of the HPM project. Well, for everybody out there who's ever been an investment banker, it's one thing to attract an investor, it's another thing to maintain their interest. So yeah. on that, thank you so much for the update, Troy, on Murchison Minerals. And for those of you out there seeking more information, please go to their website. Thank you, Troy. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate it.